Huskers back to work here as they began preparations for Maryland on Tuesday. Hi, Sean Callahan with HuskerOnline.com. We caught up with both coordinators, several players, as they prepare for this very explosive Maryland Terrapin offense. Especially this guy. I mean, no matter who it is, he's he's finding ways to run around and throw the ball. He he's an athlete. I mean, let's 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 make sure we he is an athlete and a really good thrower. You know what I mean? So we're gonna have to find be creative. You know, we're gonna have to have to find ways to flush them, flush them, to keep them in the pocket, to bring in extra guys, to drop in everybody. I mean, we gotta we gotta figure something out to just continuously change looks on him because again he's he's good and he's a veteran. They have a good quarterback. They have, they have, they have a really they have, they're a really good team. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have to play well and um, that's their 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 quarterback's elusive and we're gonna just have to we're gonna have to rush him and get him on the ground. And I'm really excited for the challenge. Uh, coaches have been challenging us this this week about that and so we're gonna go get it done. He's just an athletic quarterback. You know we gotta pressure him, get him out. Um, you know hit him. You know if we let him run around, play freely. They're going to put up some points. So our goal is to get him out of there, uh, keep him in the pocket, get him out, uh, you know, take him down, you know, get him scared a little bit. If we do that, we'll, we'll win the game. Yeah, I mean, they just they just throw the ball around a lot. Um, and when they run it, too, they're successful in the run game, too. It's not just uh, – they're not just a completely one-sided team. Like, they have a they have a really good – they kind of have a stable back that are pretty solid. So um, we have to make sure when they run the ball, we tackle it well. But um, they – pass the ball I think like 75 75 percent of the time or something crazy like that so we got to make sure when we when they do run it we knock it out to make them kind of that one dimensional and then we have to be able to cover guys and scramble drill and keep uh keep their quarterback in the pocket um and just make make hard throws for them so yeah they're they're obviously a great team so we're excited for it Meanwhile, on offense, a lot of discussion around Heinrich Harburg and, and just handling the pressure of being the quarterback at Nebraska yeah I mean there's been a lot of ups and downs, you know, even in inside the games, you know, one quarter we come out really slow or, you know, maybe against the one we start hot, you know, just managing all of that. Um, it takes a team, you know, I think. And so I'm glad that we have, you know, coaches that understand that and then we're the staff to help support that. Dr. Haskell, um, you know, a lot of people up there who help manage that because I couldn't do that by myself. I think he's, he's to the point and, uh, I reference Coach Rule a lot because I listen to his stories, but just, you know, through the years you get quarterbacks that uh, when they come in, they start playing early, right? They're young. They're, they, have a, they don't have a lot of demons in their head. They just play. They're glad to be out there. Uh, every opportunity, every game you play, more and more information starts to seep in, starts to seep in. Now you're not just playing and relaxing and having fun. You're thinking and thinking and thinking. So uh, we're at that stage right now where I just told him, you know, Heinrich just then, like, just relax, smile. All right, smile, have fun, run through somebody's face. Like, go back to the time where people were asking if you were going to slide or not. And we said, no, you're just going to run through their face. Go back to that guy, and you'll be fine. So, you know, this week we're just working on him, just freeing up his mind and going and play as fast as he can, as physical as he can. And each and every week, opposing teams have kind of defended Harburg differently, and the challenge is figuring out new ways to go at it. Yeah, I mean, Purdue, it was, like you said, the safety, um, bringing him down. But, when, you know, when they do that, that opens up stuff for – you know, Jalen Lloyd, Malachi to run over the top. Um, Michigan State was, you know, different. They they gave us a couple different looks, and a lot of the time on our zone reads, the end was coming so far up the field, I couldn't really pull it. Um, and so they're forcing, you know, forcing me to hand the ball off a lot on some of those. And then, you know, some of the pitch games, you know, they're taking the back, taking the back, taking the back, and then I have to dart up and then they've got you know maybe a couple of guys there for me so we're you know I'm going to continue to work on you know attacking those guys making them take me so I can pitch the ball um, and then when they do make me run you know I'm going to get vertical try and get five seven yards yeah uh, I think everybody's kind of got a, a, a somewhat of a common theme of how they're defending us and uh you know, they have their different niches to it but you know it is it is centered around they know that you know they've got to stop our quarterback run game, and so each week you got to figure out early what they're doing and try to combat that with whether it be a play action pass, a reverse, or a fake quarterback run where somebody else gets it. So you got to be in tune to that uh, early on in the game, and our guys, our staff's done a nice job of that to this point. And one of the keys is finding those big plays over the top, particularly at wide receiver when you have guys like Malachi Coleman. I've got to get them, put them in positions where they can go and have a chance to execute plays to get ahead of the sticks and 
and you know we're going to do that moving forward, making sure that we have every opportunity to go, you know, gain the maximum amount of yards on each play. Nebraska's defense got a big boost last week with the return of Marquise Buford. You know, I feel like I feel like every game we've played, this team has played this year has been meaningful. Uh, every game is a learning experience, and every game is a chance to show how much better we've gotten as a team. But I'm just excited to be back out playing with my guys, honestly, you know. It doesn't matter what game it is, who we're playing, anything like that. I'm just grateful to be able to play with my guys again. Yeah, Buse, Buse awesome. I mean, everybody has seen him work and how he works in the off season to get back from that knee injury. Like, everybody's just basically in awe of him. Like, we're just like, yeah, he's, he's a leader on the team, and he was leading from behind kind of the pack, like working his tail off in the pit, doing all the – kind of the, the gritty work that no one no one really sees um, and to come back and play and get a give us meaningful snaps is just like it's just a testament to him and his character. So yeah, we're gonna rally behind a guy like that and we're always like welcome to have a guy that's played a lot of football that's a good football player back on the field with us. When Tony White looks back at last week's loss at Michigan State, I think one of the things he wants to do is just be more aggressive this week. We just didn't make the play. You know, we uh we were put in some positions where I don't think I was aggressive enough as a play caller. You know, I, I, I know a couple weeks back I talked about letting them go play and trusting in those guys, and you know the game was kind of it was just kind of stuck in that in that in that rut right there, and you know I didn't didn't want to get too too aggressive to you know and 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 have one pop or something like that. So just kept everything in front and then see what happened, but. You know that's that's 100% on on me as the play caller. You know, again, you got to be able to trust those guys and have an instinct and 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 let them go. And I don't think I I gave the guys enough enough opportunity to go and unleash and make a play. And then finally, I think for Nebraska, one of the things that hangs over this football team is getting back to a bowl game. I think everybody knows what this game against Maryland means. Now the challenge is just moving forward and focusing on Saturday. Uh, yeah, no, we're we're going in this week. It's um, we're we're not thinking about any of the outside stuff. All we're worrying about all we're worrying about is going and dominating uh, the team we're playing. And um, we're we're not we're not letting the outside noise of going to a bowl game or you know people saying this or that. Um, this week it's it's we're going to lean on each other and we're going to just go out there and dominate uh, like we, like we have been doing. Yeah, just don't we just don't look at it as a get another win or it's just what you do every single day it's just that process and that uh what you've been doing since should have been week one of fall camp um has been the same throughout like there there's no different this week or last week or the week before the week before that it should all be the same you shouldn't change how you prepare how you do anything because we're one win closer to a bowl game or not it should be all the same so uh that's in my mind that's how i look at it um we just have to do a good job of spreading that uh, idea throughout the team. Reporting here with the Nebraska football team in Lincoln, I'm Sean Callahan with HuskerOnline.com.